Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a quick little video. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about entity component systems. And I've, I've been kind of busy the last couple of weeks working on the Action RPG course, and I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do today for my video. I still wanted to upload a video today, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to make it on. And a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago or so I had made a small test project using Love2D and Lua which is a game engine for 2D game development and it's pretty popular it's uh, open source engine I think it's definitely free I'm pretty sure it's open source and I decided to try it just for this specific structure so an entity component system is basically just a way to structure your project and it makes you think about your project in a little bit of a different way it's not really object-oriented programming anymore it's using entities instead of objects and instead of inheriting behaviors from a parent object you have components attached to your entity and those components can give you I guess data and certain behaviors so let me kind of show you, I don't want to get too much into the actual code of this just because you guys probably, you know, you might not be familiar with Love2D or you might not be f familiar with Lua in the Love2D engine. So that doesn't really matter a lot here. I'm just going to show you kind of how the entity component system works uh, from a general standpoint. So you have your entities. Uh, that make up your game objects. So let's say you have a player entity, an enemy entity, and a laser entity. And if we come into my entity right here, code right here, you can see I have a player entity, an enemy entity, and an enemy spawner entity, and a laser, and also an explosion entity. Okay? And these entities are made up of components. So basically an entity is just a list of components. And components only contain data. So I have player equals true, so I know this is a player. I have position, a position component. I have a collision component. I have a velocity component and a health component and a sound and a sprite and a friction. So these are some different components on the player. And these components are reusable. So the, the enemy entity also has a position component. And it has its own position component, obviously. But the logic behind creating the component is exactly the same. And you can see all of my... Everything but the spawner. The spawner doesn't have a position because uh, it doesn't need one. So you can see I've got a lot of different components here. So your components build your entities. Uh, you can kind of create a new entity based on components. And then you have your systems. And these are the things that actually make the game run. Because with only the entities and the components, you just have data and it doesn't actually perform any logic. So the systems actually contain the logic. And let me show you right here. So, for example, a really, a really obvious system is the draw system. This is a great system right here. And I'm using a, a library called TinyECS, which does a lot of the work for me for, for the systems. But basically what I do is I create a new system, and this system will only operate on entities that have a position and a sprite. And the reason is because if it doesn't have a position, then you won't know where to draw it. And if it doesn't have a sprite, you won't know what to draw. And so it will only... So this right here, it actually won't do anything with our spawner because the spawner doesn't have a sprite or a position uh, component. So, so you can kind of filter... You can kind of filter your entities with your systems. And this becomes really powerful because of this system, because your logic is completely separate from your data. So 
Inside of my process, this is the actual function that runs for this system. You can see I just call love draw, and I draw the entity's sprite at the entity's position, and that's about it. I just draw the entity's sprite at the entity's position. So, if I come back into my main, oh, that's my math. Let's come back into my main dot Lua right here. You can see these are the systems that I'm running. And if I remove the draw system by commenting it out, I can run my game. Well, let me run the game with the draw system first so you guys can see it. Uh, it's nothing special. It's just uh, this little game might look familiar to you guys. So you can see game works fine. If I remove the draw system though from my entity component system and run the game again unable to get local entities I must have messed something up there. Let's make sure. What did I mess up? Library. Tiny. I messed something up. Let's come into main.lua. Try running it one more time. There we go. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this one more time. Comment out this. Remove that. Run the game again. And that's that's my issue. Oh, it's because I actually I actually call the draw inside of here. I forgot about this. The draw system is a little bit specific to this project because of my view and scaling and stuff. So it doesn't automatically run the draw system. I have to run it myself. And it's it was trying to run it, but it didn't exist inside the world. So here's the... This is how funny this, this ends up being. The entire game is still running and working. It's just not drawing anything. So I can... If you have a bug, let's say you have a bug inside of one of your systems. Or you have a bug in your game and you're not sure where it is. You can just start removing systems to try and find out where the bug is. And a fu another funny one to remove is the movement system. The movement system, because it handles all the logic for moving entities. So if I remove that and save, um, I can't move anything. Nothing moves. But everything else still works. It still creates enemies. It still does everything. So entity component systems can create a very decoupled structure where your your game logic and your components are very separate from each other. And later on when your projects get really, really big, it can become easier and easier to... It can, it can still be really easy to add new things to your project. Uh, it doesn't really get harder because your system is very... De your structure is very decoupled, which is basically means that your logic doesn't really connect. Uh, if you if you change something in one place, it doesn't necessarily mess up other things in your code. And that's a very common problem that comes up in a hierarchical system with, uh, with object-oriented programming. And this has its flaws too. Every type of structure has its flaws, but I really think that this type of structure could be really useful for specific types of games. And you probably want me to list some. So I have, I still have a, I feel like a pretty limited understanding of entity component systems. I've made a small entity component system, but this is the first one I've ever made. So it's, I don't feel like I have a huge understanding of how they work yet, but I can still give you kind of information based off of what I feel like I learned. And what I learned was adding new features to the game was really easy to do, and it never got difficult to do that. I learned that a system like this, uh, you might... I, I kind of felt like a system like this works really well for projects where you kind of want to define the rules of your game 
and not the objects of your game. So if you if you want your game to have specific if you want your world to have specific rules that everything follows, then this system works pretty well. But if you want specific very unique objects, because you basically you basically build your you build your objects from your entities or from your components, and so you it makes it harder to create kind of unique. I guess everything is unique because it's a different structure of components, right? So it's unique in that way. But if you create if you want to add something to an entity, you have to create a new component which then could potentially be used by everyone, which is funny. I mean, let's say you have an inventory component and you you attach it to your sword items so that your swords can be put inside of your inventory entity, right? So your your inventory system loops through inventory loops through entities that have the inventory component and it kind of does the logic whatever it needs to on them. Well, you could potentially attach an inventory component to an enemy inside of your game. And then you could put that enemy in your inventory. Because all the logic would work. All you need to be able to put something inside of an inventory would be the inventory component and then the systems would then filter what it needs to do and put it inside of your inventory because it has that component. So it's a really powerful system and I'm probably going to be using it with some of the projects that I work on. This first one I made in Lua obviously just because Lua had some stuff already set up for creating entity component systems. So I could use a lot of the libraries that were already created like Tiny, uh, Tiny ECS. And that was that was useful, but I think when GameMaker comes out with inline functions and some other like structs, basically uh, you know like lightweight objects, when those kind of features that are on the roadmap when they come out, creating an entity component system inside of GameMaker might become a lot easier and and more powerful, and could be something that you could do inside of GameMaker so that if you made a larger project, it could continue to, I guess you could continue to add features with ease. And because GameMaker seems to struggle with coupling, or at least I feel like when I'm using it, my projects become very interconnected. And it can be difficult to work around that and, and deal with it inside of GameMaker. I'm sure there are solutions, I'm sure it's possible, but it is, it is tricky sometimes and I think an entity component system inside of GameMaker could could work. We could come up with something that would that would work pretty well. Real fast I want to show you guys too here uh, if we come into entities again. I want to show you some of the stuff that you can do by just messing with entities. Uh, so we could potentially create we could potentially change this enemy uh, so that if we removed its collision component right here on the enemy and then we run the game oh we still don't have our movement system I want to add our movement system back in I did add it back in I just didn't save that was the issue okay so Let's make sure I save the entity with the collision component. Because I think with, if I remove the collision component from the entity, yeah, it can't, it can't actually collide. So let's come into our systems here. And it looks like my collision system right here doesn't actually require the collision component. We want to make sure that it does require that. So we'll save the game. And it's still movement system, friction system. It is called just collision, right? Oh, it's because I have I loop through all I loop through all the entities. But I have a filter right here.
for my loop entity dot target ah oh, yes that makes sense require target and require collision I think I think I just need to require collision right there there we go yeah so there's a little bit of coupling there but if I just remove the collision it's because I didn't create I didn't make the system filter correctly this is how the system should be filtering it shouldn't do anything unless it has a collision component but it was trying to so that's really powerful because you can just remove a component from an entity let's say you're getting a bug inside of collisions you know it's pretty easy because it's this is this is where the collision logic is for everything in the game well technically this is the projectile collision system so this is the collision logic for all projectiles but that's really not a lot of code to go through you don't have to look through different objects you can just look in your systems and find it right here so anyways hopefully you guys found this video kind of interesting uh, even if it just gets you curious about entity component systems and has you looking them up online and learning more about them I'd recommend checking them out they're pretty interesting they do seem to be from what I've learned I know there are ways to fix this but they do seem to be a little bit slower than than other systems or other structures because because there is a little bit more processing required but uh, computers are getting so fast nowadays I, I'm inclined to go for ease of use for the programmer over over how fast the system is 99% of the time there's only very rare occasions where you actually need the extra speed uh, so I, I think this is a really interesting system that you should look into and learn more about if you have questions about it didn't quite understand something that I was talking about in the video feel free to leave comments I'll do my best to answer them and like I said I'm not an expert on these on this structure yet but I have used it a little bit and I feel like I've got the basics down now so thank you guys so much for watching this video I'll have a video coming out tomorrow that will be kind of a big announcement so keep an eye out for that and I will talk to you guys later